morning to everybody. Thank you very much for attending to this webinar. My name is uh, Nerea Rojas from the cluster of uh, mobility and logistics uh, of, in the Basque Country. Today's agenda uh, is divided into three main parts. First of all, we will present a brief overview of the Smart City Clusters project. Then uh, we will explain what the cluster exchange, exchange pilot is. And finally, we will um, present what are the next events we are organizing in which you uh, probably can participate. At the end, we will have uh, time for questions. So please, if you have any, any question, write on the chat and we will try to answer at the end of the session. So, as you know, uh, more than half of the world's population uh, lives in urban environments, and it is expected that uh, this percentage to increase till 75% by 2050. This is pushing a big challenge for cities that have become smarter in order to better, to better manage their resources and achieve more uh, efficient cities with uh, less pollution and provide healthier environments for their citizens. This is why smart city clusters, sorry, okay. This is why smart city clusters project is focusing on smart cities, bringing together different clusters related to the smart city model, mobility, energy and environment and ICT, which are um, exploring a relationship model between them in order to promote long-term cross-sectoral and cross uh, border initiatives able to generate collaboration opportunities between their ecosystems and to uh, create an impact in their territories. The project runs for 24 months with five partners and we expect to contribute to facilitate 50 exchanges for collaboration of entities. The clusters, uh, in Bull <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the clusters uh, in the smart city uh, clusters project are covering different uh, sectors of the of the smart cities: mobility and logistics, uh, electric mobility, environment and energy, and ICT. But we are also looking for collaboration with uh, other sectors, also uh, taking part in the smart city, like automation, building, aerospace or urban planning. The consortium is integrated by five clusters uh, belonging to four European countries, Spain, uh, Italy, um, <clears throat> Germany, and Bulgaria. These clusters have different capacities and work on different sectors. We have the cluster of mobility and logistics of the Basque Country in Spain with 105 members and that are working on different strategic areas, not only smart cities, but covering other uh, areas like connected mobility, clean mobility, logistics 4.0 and talent. We have the cluster digital of Catalonia, also in Spain, with seven, si 17, 60 members, sorry, and uh, working groups focusing on uh, disruptive technologies like blockchain, cybersecurity, digital transformation, and big data and analytics. Then we have Torino Wireless in Piemonte region in Italy with 231 uh, members that are working on smart cities, uh, digital transformation, smart communities, including uh, data economy, smart governance, and vertical applications that also include these uh, disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence or big data and tech for social. We have the electric vehicles industrial cluster in uh, Bulgaria, in Yugozopaden, with uh, 73 members that are working on developing the electromobility in the region, uh, but also uh, integrating other uh, renewable and hydrogen sources. They are also working on, in a national project in order to create an integrated platform for the charging infrastructure, and they are also working in the, in the sectoral education of the electromobility. And finally, but not less important, we have the cluster of energy and environment in Leipzig, Sajonia, uh, Germany, with uh, 72 members that uh, in which uh, the cluster mem members are working on new energy systems, natural resources, urbanizing the economy, intelligent mobility and human resources. 
the objectives of this project are to establish a space in which uh, the clusters in Wolf can uh, collaborate and, and share uh, knowledge and experiences, also to identify best practices in order to uh, better improve uh, the management of our clusters, to identify and define a common strategy to work on the, on the smart cities uh, topic, uh, to define and execute uh, uh, of an action plan that aims to implement activities and methodologies for collaboration of our ecosystems, and finally, to support the implementation of the cluster exchange pilot scheme that we will explain later on. Main project activities can be grouped in three main uh, groups. Uh, first of all, we have the cluster capacity building activities that is focusing on the organization on specific thematic trainings to improve the cluster management. Then we, will, we are organizing networking and learning events in which SMEs, cluster and innovation agents can participate and benefit from uh, the learning and, and, and visit activities. And final, finally, we want to develop uh, a partnership in order to uh, explore uh, collaboration opportunities for our clusters on the smart cities. Finally, at the end of the project, we expect to contribute to the following uh, results. We expect to increase the capacity and skills of our clusters, thanks to the seminars and the trainings in order to provide better uh, services and better support to our SMEs and ecosystem. Uh, we will create uh, the smart city value change of our uh, cluster uh, ecosystem. Uh, we will develop this partnership uh, strategy and implement, uh, and we will implement a roadmap um, to establish different collaboration activities in the uh, smart cities. And we would like to contribute uh, to reach uh, 50 exchanges involving at least 35 European SMEs that can benefit from this learning uh, transfer of knowledge and other uh, visit activities. So this is the main uh, aspects of the project. And uh, now I will give the floor uh, to Christian that is going to present what the cluster exchange is. Thank you very much. So Christian. Thank you, Nerea. I'm gonna share my screen now. I'm sharing my screen or you are you gonna do it? I share my screen, right? Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Do you see my screen? Nerea, can you confirm? Yes. All right, fantastic. So uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Christian Moscardi from the Catalan Digital Cluster. And I'm gonna explain to you the Cluster Exchange Pilot Scheme. Uh, there will be a, a questions and answers session at the end. So uh, any detail you would like to know, remember that at the end of the of the webinar, we will be able to, to answer them. Uh, let me start then. The Cluster Exchange Program is a new uh, pilot program that is supported by the European Commission. Uh, Commission. Uh, it is managed uh, by 13 uh, partnerships that belong to the European Strategic Cluster uh, Platform and is provided by, uh, by the ECC. Uh, the, objectives, the objective of the uh, Cluster Exchange Program is to address the need for innovation and cross-fertilization opportunities among industri industrial ecosystems. Uh, here, there's an overview of the, of the different partnerships. As you can see, each partnership is tackling uh, different topics and ecosystems uh, like sports, like small city, uh, which we are representing, uh, textile, uh, advanced materials, urban mobility, and what we want to express with this slide is there's a big structure of, of collaboration. There's 13 partnerships that uh, bring together 69 clusters, different clusters covering all these topics from uh, 21 countries uh, in Europe and from other countries participating in, in COSME. So you can just imagine the possibilities of collaborations that you can find by participating. What it is exactly the cluster exchange? Well, exchange uh, means there is a short term uh, period of time of collaboration to better connect Europe's industrial ecosystems. 
the, the idea of exchange is to facilitate the transitional cooperation, peer learning, networking, innovation uptake, a long list of, of, of examples that we will show later between uh, actors uh, of different, different clusters or sectors. Uh, it is implemented obviously by the support of the clusters organizations like smart city clusters. How is organized? Well, the idea is very simple. Uh, the program defines temporary exchange exchanges that can, can be defined between the participants. And basically it's, a, it's an exchange between a visiting organization and a host organization, okay? Both or types of organizations will always have the support from a partnership contact point, which is in this case would be us as smart city clusters. And, and, and we will guide you through the process. So we all, you're, gonna, you're always gonna have support. The exchanges, it means there's a period of, of time of collaboration founded on mutual interest and benefits. This means that each participant is matching uh, each other in order to, to, to gain something, to obtain a, a benefit of it. Uh, during the pandemic, due to COVID-19, the exchanges were, were initially planned as physical had been transformed into virtual, okay? Virtual exchanges means by video conference. That doesn't mean that physical exchanges won't happen. They, won't ha they will be happening once the situation is back to normal. Uh, next important thing to explain is who can participate, okay? As I said, participants can be visitors and hosts, okay? And uh, the type of organizations that we're targeting here is representative of clusters organizations or business, or business and network organizations, SMEs that are members of, of participating countries in the COSMIC program, or scaling up support organizations. As you can see, we have, we're showing some examples, it could be tech centers, creati creative hubs, uh, incubators, accelerators, et cetera. What are the benefits for a participant, which is a visitor? Okay, well, there's a lot of uh, benefits that you can, you can get, but the main ones are that it, it can allow you to create new business opportunities uh, and, 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 and get involved in new innovative projects. Uh, also expand your networks of contacts, uh, and obviously that it can benefit your business and, and, and develop new partnerships. And also gain knowledge about foreign markets and cultures. Uh, there's also an additional list that I added uh, below, but we're gonna be sharing this uh, slide with you later on. So you will have all these uh, benefits listed and you can just uh, identify yourself which the best ones that you, that you identify. Then benefits for the participants which are hosts. Well, that's also an interesting uh, way of participating is for those institutions, organizations that uh, want to develop you know, cross borders partnerships, expand their horizons in terms of a, in, in a geographical way. Uh, also expand your contacts because there's a lot of visibility because of participating in, in the uh, cluster exchange. Share your experience, your expertise, your knowledge, information in, in the specific areas where you are uh, an expert. And also, as I said before, increase the visibility of your organization. Also, an, a, a, an important thing to share here is that a host uh, can be a host as many times as, as they want. So, and also to different uh, participant visitors. So that's something that we can explain in detail later on. Which are the specifics of the exchanges? Well, uh, initially the duration was set as a minimum of three uh, effective work days up to one month. That's something to be decided within the the participants in their exchange. Uh, also, there was planned a lump sum contribution, a financial assistance for the physical exchanges. Obviously, there was travel and accommodation involved, but that's something that has changed and I wanna explain uh, in a little bit. And how to apply? Well, it's very easy because it's just about showing interest and registering via the cluster exchange IT tool, which is a website that has been defined, designed to, to allow this process. What has happened? What there have been changes? Well, basically because of the pandemic, the duration has been slightly affected in terms of, of, of how it can be implemented because uh, now the exchanges, as I said, will be virtual and can be extended through consecutive weeks. Uh, I, we specified below how, 
how what which is a formula used but for for instance that that's something that can bring a lot of questions but we're going to answer them all uh, if for example you were planning uh, to make an exchange during three days now we are allowing to to make these exchanges multiplied per two that means and per weeks that means you can do it during six weeks but here you know the formula can be can be defined in different ways so uh, we can explain that in more detail later regarding the contribution funding uh, obviously there's no physical exchange they are virtual so there's the participants will not receive financial financial support but uh, that doesn't mean that once the situation goes back to normal and when physical exchanges are, are possible, then uh, participating visitors will be able to receive this financial assistance. And regarding how to apply, the COVID hasn't affected at all. Basically, there's no changes. It's still an easy process uh, where you will have always uh, the support from the partnership that you have uh, selected. Other basic eligibility specifics is that participants, that's very simple information. Participants must be minimum 18 years old. Uh, they, have a, they must uh, have a residence be, uh, in the European area or countries participating in COSME. And also an important thing is that once you uh, create your profile, you have to select the languages where you are competent at. Uh, this obviously reaches the, the partnership and the exchanges can be divided according to not only interest and geographics, but also language. Uh, here, what we want to say is it's important that any language that you specify in your profile, in profile you feel comfortable working with. It's basically that. And here's something that I said before. Uh, applicants can participate in, in virtual ex exchanges uh, and still be eligible to participate in a future physical exchange when uh, we are able to do it. Uh, now is the important aspect of the participation because it's the registration and participation process. Okay, so there is a tool called the uh, IT tool, Cluster Exchange IT tool, which is a system that we uh, that can be used to manage all the all the phases within registration and participation. It's four simple phases, which is registration, uh, where you create your profile and, and specify your details, matching that the that's where you find different other participants to exchange with. The exchange building, that's basically when it happens, and the final phase, which is the, the reporting. I'm going to explain slightly each one of them. Registration. Very simple. You create a profile, register via the IT tool as a visiting or as a host uh, organization. Okay, and you have to obviously introduce basic data and also upload a CV. That's very important. Because this way we can we can also understand your expertise, your your ambition, your interests, etc. Then you have to select a partnership based on the sector and geographical location. Obviously, we invite you to to um, to select smart city clusters. But if you are also targeting uh, other topics that we uh, shown before in the in the thirteen partnerships, you can also uh, look out for those. And once you select your partnership the partnership will receive your registration and your application and will assess it, okay? Assessing the registration means accepting it or rejecting in case there is any information missing. Then remember that for all the registration process, you have, you have, sorry, you have our support all the time. Matching, this means that this is next phase, once your application is accepted, okay, then you are uh, you have access to the online catalog where you can find all the all the different exchanges that you can that you can you can choose. Uh, the the platform will suggest matching organizations based on your profile, but you can either select one of these uh, suggested matchings or you can navigate the catalog to find uh, to find new ones. Okay. Therefore, the, this is like obviously a very simple uh, matching process. Once you identify another organization. Once you identify between both of you, you can establish a contact. And we go to the next phase. Once the visiting organization and the host organization have reached an agreement, they've been discussing, they've been explaining their interests, uh, etc. This exchange must be planned. Plan means that it has to be put down on paper uh, with a document which is called the commitment to quality. Okay, this, this agreement 
uh, must include dates where the exchange is going to happen, objectives, the action plan, what are the uh, results expected outcomes that, that each organization uh, expects, and responsibilities, okay, which uh, what, what each organization uh, has committed to do. And then once this agreement is, is defined by the, by the organizations, it's submitted to your contract points, to the, to the partnership right, that it's been guiding you through the process. Uh, the partnership validates the agreement, and then, then you can start exchanging. You have to sign it, we upload it in the IT tool, and the exchange can start according to your agreement. Okay? I'm uh, adding at the end the financial agreement. Well, this is also a, a mandatory step in the case that there is a physical exchange, because obviously you have to sign this agreement in order to receive the funding uh, once you, you show you have been traveling, et cetera. But that's something that obviously we're gonna recover it once we can uh, do the physical exchanges. I got to say that obviously physical exchange is, is much more uh, realistic than virtual. We all know that we've been many months uh, learning and getting to used to the virtual experiences, but you know, uh, not only ourselves, all the different partnerships are coping with it. So it's just about time and we, we cross fingers. We go in then to the next phase, which is the uh, finalization. That means that once the exchange has happened, once it has been accomplished, the, participant, the participants must uh, complete a report. Okay, is, is an evaluation in terms of, uh, of, of what they have uh, extracted from it and, and, and their opinions. And obviously also once physical exchange can happen, uh, then we also will activate another process, which is the, the financial assistance where there's like a controlling process to, to pay you back the travel and accommodation expenses. So this is basically the, the, the basis within the IT tool for participating. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot of information, uh, support information that you can uh, consult. And we're gonna be sharing this, these uh, slides where, where these, these are active links that can take you to the leaflet, which is a quick presentation of the, of the cluster exchange, the cluster, uh, the ECCP platform, uh, the cluster exchange page, the IT2 user manual, which is very detailed and specific of the, of the registration process. And obviously, our uh, email that you can always write to us. Again, remember, I'm very, you know, insisting on this. You always have uh, our support to follow you through this, through this process. And I think that I'm done. And I can just uh, pause the ball uh, to Nerea. And thank you very much. Remember that any questions, we will be able to answer at the end of the session. So thank you very much, Christian. Now we are going to present what are the next events of, of, uh, of the project that we are organizing and in which you can participate. So Silvana uh, from Torino Wireless, who will explain us uh, these events. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see the slides? No, not yet. Can you, you gonna see it? Can you see it or not yet? We can see it now. Can see it now. Perfect. You can see it well. Okay. So, um, as uh, Nerea and Christian told you, uh, we are organizing as the Smart City Clusters Project also an, an event on different events, both focus on clusters and SMEs. Um, the um, the the let's say the format of the events can uh, can be different according to which is the um, 
let's say the 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 target of the event of course and also the uh, in this time of the of our experience and um, and year uh, they can be both virtual in this time or the idea for them is to be also physical next year if it's possible so for now um, what we are organizing and we have thought is about organizing this networking and learning events focus on smart cities because of course is the, the topic we are addressing through the project. These are uh, include sessions that are oriented as I told you to SMEs clusters and other scale up organizations that are interested in learning more and participating to, to these learning activities and networking uh, regarding the topics. So what we are, um, uh, what the event format includes are learning with experts. So the idea is to, to get to organize workshops and different um, workshops or trainings with specialized universities, big players, experienced business actors that can share their experience and that can teach us a little bit more about the state of the art of the current uh, uh, technologies and the current, uh, let's say, developments within the smart cities and also about how to better tackle them in the different topics that we're addressing. Then the public administrations um, also, uh, so they can share their plan, plans and their opportunities because we know that smart cities, of course, are really related to what the cities are planning and what the cities are uh, needing and which are their policy targets and their, um, uh, let's say, uh, opportunities uh, generated for the SMEs. So the idea is to create also links, not only get to know more about what the, how a smart city uh, uh, public administration thinks, but also how they can, uh, how we can as companies and then as clusters approach them and support them in their smart city plans. And furthermore, there's a, uh, of, of course, a session to increase networking and through pitching and matchmaking because we know that for sure the best thing to to get to one other places and to know uh, more people is about and generate businesses is of course getting to know each other and uh, getting the opportunity to talk with each other once you have a, a, a common interest or different ways to 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 collaborate so the idea or the original idea, let's say from the project before <laughs> a pandemic uh, arrived to us was uh, to do this kind of, um, of, a, of training of learning activities within a, a big event, of course, because uh, the idea was, would be to uh, take advantage of all the, the um, participants that a big event can't, um, let's say, put together and give all of, all of you the opportunity to participate to the event, but also uh, assess, let's say, participate in the, these sessions. For instance, one of the big events that we were thinking about is the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona. That this, this, uh, this year is gonna be a, a live event, a virtual event, but uh, it's an example of how uh, maybe next year we could organize a, a mission there or in the context also of the, of the physical event. So, how, what are the main, let's say, um, differences between <laughs> what we are thinking as an event? Like for the first networking and training event on smart cities, we were thinking, of course, it will have to be uh, next year. We don't know yet if it will be possible to do it physical or virtual. This is kind of like, you see the differences that, of course, a virtual event will have uh, when compared to a physical event. So uh, the minimum days, the minimum, uh, uh, let's say, duration of the of the training is, of course, three day. We were thinking three working days. So if it's physical, are three consecutive days. But if we do it in a virtual way, uh, it can be divided, as uh, Christian was explaining, uh, within a six week weeks period. So we can even uh, organize half days and you, uh, like more um, more divided in time. Then the, uh, the physical exchange will be, of course, as I told you in the, in the big event, because if you are going and traveling somewhere, it will be interesting and important to take advantage of all the, the different uh, uh, 
um, opportunities that a big event gets, like just uh, more networking and getting to to be in touch with a uh, with um, with more people that they could be interested in, more companies, public administration, etc., and also to have like a representation within the event. And it would be a big event plus visits mainly, uh, and also some sessions. So instead of having the virtual session with an expert where it's more like a workshop or a training session that lasts half a day and they talk and uh, more in a like, um, didactic way. Uh, if it's a physical event, the possibility will be to go also to, this, uh, to these facilities. So not only to get to talk with specialized universities, public administration, but also visit their uh, and big place in this, in this case, but also visit their uh, establishment and see how they work within uh, the real place. Uh, of course, both uh, events include the networking and matchmaking part, because as I told you, is uh, is one of the main things um, and the main opportunities that this kind of uh, of training and events can give to everyone. So these events are planned to to be held, as I told you, on 2021, mainly the. Uh, we have to still check what, which are the, the dates and, and, the, and the availability, of course, for doing so virtual or physical. For now, let's say that the Commission, at least for, uh, from the European Commission, have, uh, has told us that uh, probably the virtual exchanges will have to be, if it's uh, uh, before April of 2021, the physical the, sorry, the physical, yeah, the physical exchanges cannot be done or shouldn't, of course, we are all, I think, right now, right now seeing the second part of, uh, of the coronavirus. So it's all work in progress. But in order for, to know a little bit more about what do you think uh, about this event and if you would be interested in participating, uh, please, you can answer the, um, the poll questions that is that are gonna appear right now. There are two questions. Mainly ask if you will if you will be interested in participating to a networking and training event like this, and uh, also if you will be. That's the first one. And then the other one is if you would prefer a physical or a virtual exchange. Of course, uh, we we know that the, for now maybe they will be, all be virtual, but uh, given that the project lasts up to at least goes. Uh, for the 2021 uh, again, let's say if you will be, which kind of event would you prefer? Uh, if you want to give us also any other comments about this, you can write it in the chat too. Um, so yes, this is the the idea for this event. As I was telling you, is at least the ones that are organized by our partnership are all focused on smart cities. So as Nene was talking, was uh, explained the topics within a smart cities are a lot, are different. We are concentrating mainly on the mobility, the energy, the environment, and of course the technologies as an enhancing tool for the public administration and all that has to do with the uh, smart, uh, smart cities. Nevertheless, uh, as Christian was telling you, uh, not only uh, within the cluster exchange program, there's there won't be not only available our projects and our, our um, trainings regarding our projects, but there are different other topics uh, also organized in different events. All the, um, the different, the events and the trainings and the sessions can have all different formats. I just presented to you what are the formats that we are currently thinking uh, on doing so. So um, this is the, 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 the way we want to kind of check with you if this kind of um, event is something of your interest, and also if you have any any suggestion to include and everything, is more than welcome. Um, okay, uh, we'll. We start, we'll uh, I think we have to launch the second uh, the second uh, poll still. And uh, so then, so you can um, answer us about the kind of event would you prefer. Uh, think, as I told you, not only about this moment, but also on next year, and let us know what you what you think. Um, so, meanwhile, there's another training program that I want to share with you. This is the first program that we are for sure organizing. 
uh, is going to be held uh, at the end of this year, uh, starting at the end of November and then up to September. This one is only for cluster organizations because it's uh, as uh, Torino Wireless, let's say, and as um, uh, all the group Torino Wireless and uh, uh, the, class, the other clusters that we are part of this project, uh, we know that for us as clusters, we do have to, we want to learn more and we want to enhance, enhance our skills, competences, and the ways that we can support the companies that are within our networks. So aiming at this, we have come up with this online event that is, is to contribute to the team's capacity building um, and is open and free for any cluster organization that can that wants to open. The agenda, I think some of you clusters have already received some invitation. It's, a, it's something we're gonna, we're still a, sending. This is the first time we're talking about it and presenting it. Uh, this is the agenda that would be, that would be developed within this training. Uh, it starts with a networking of all the clusters, then uh, a training about the strategy design and smart specialization alignment, uh, knowledge exchange and networking, so the best practices exchange and knowledge transfer, and then the financial and sustainable business for clusters that we, of course, know that is really a topic of interest for all of us. Um, this is a, a, a current um, event that pre-registration is open. Once the clusters are registered, we will contact you, of course, to confirm the place and also to guide you in all the process regarding the cluster exchange platform uh, and IT tool, as Christian explained. Uh, if you have any want, are interested and want any more information about this, then you can please write us to info at marketing clusters. And that's it. So I think uh, I don't know uh, if we should pass already to the Q&A question, Maria. I have here some questions. Um, one that said if more than one language can be selected. Yes, you can select more than one language if you are uh, confident with this language and you uh, have the competences to, to speak. So you can select as many languages as you speak. Um, it is says, I like to have some more info about Logistics 4.0. I worked for many years about digital logistics for postal services. Uh, so I would like to know if the logistics 4.0 we consider also national and international. Yes, uh, I mean, one thing is the, the events organized for the clusters that are focusing on smart cities, but uh, we also have our networks. So, so we can have um, matchmakings related to logistics. If uh, consider that uh, in our clusters, for instance, we have logistic partners. So uh, we can uh, create uh, exchanges related to logistics within the within the smart city uh, clusters project. So it's it's perfectly um, uh, possible. And there is no much more questions. I think that everything is very clear, or maybe <laughs> nothing is clear at all. Um, another thing that I would like to remark is that. Um, uh, we are supporting you on all the process. This means that um, not only uh, you should select the matching, we can also support you and, 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 and guide you on a possible matching in case you are a little bit lost about what will be the, the, the perfect matching for you. We can support you on selecting uh, this matching and proposing a matching uh, between uh, your company and other company that have the same interest than you. So you will be uh, all time supported by us in any kind of the, in any part of the process. So don't worry about, about, about this, okay? Uh, and just to, to mention that this, the financial assistant, uh, as uh, Christian said, is only when uh, you have uh, uh, physical exchanges. In case of virtual exchanges, as you do not need to travel, uh, we uh, cannot support you uh, with, this financial, uh, with this financial budget. But the good thing is that, for instance, one thing that I think we didn't mention is that one visitor can participate only once in a physical exchange. This means that if you were funded to travel and visit a host, 
you cannot participate again in a physical uh, event with the support, with the financial support. Of, of, obviously, you can do it, but not with the financial support of, of, of the project. Uh, but if you participate in a virtual exchange, you can participate as many times as you as you can. And uh, later on, when uh, we come back to the normal situation, if we come back a day, um, you will be able to participate in a, in a, in a physical exchange and, and get the financial assistance for the traveling uh, expenses. Um, the pilot uh, scheme will be open until the end of January 2022, and at least the uh, European Commission, uh, due to the current situation with the pandemic, uh, decide to extend this time uh, to allow uh, more physical exchange during 2022. So this is something that is not still decided, but. Uh, that could be considered uh, if the situation doesn't uh, change. Um, and I think that uh, remind that uh, to participate in this, you should you should belong to a COSME country. This is not only European countries. There is also agreements with other non-European countries. Uh, we can send you an uh, if you are interested. Uh, you, we can send you. Uh, a link in order you can see what are the COSME participating countries. Um, and, uh, I do not have mm. uh, the, the the financial support, the financial support for for because I have in here some some notes that I take that uh, we are, we didn't say the financial support uh, for the for the physical events will depend on the country you are visiting. I mean, the amount is different depending on the, on the country of the host. So this can be from 500 euros to 1,000 uh, euros, depending on the, on the, on the country. Uh, and uh, there is another uh, small limitation that uh, in case that the distance to cover is less than 200 kilometers, uh, the land sum could be divided to the half amount, okay? And uh, to mention that uh, the, the exchanges should be always cross-country. I mean, do the, it, it is not considered an exchange to get financial support if uh, you are in the same country, although you belong to different regions. Uh, one requirement uh, is that uh, the exchange should be cross-country. And, 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 and I do not have more questions here. Nerea, can I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, well, everyone, thanks everyone for voting because it's, uh, it's, it's good feedback about, about what we need to know, but I, rem I, I just, Spotted that uh, on the on the second voting, which is, are you willing or would you like to participate in this kind of missions? There was one answer which said no. Uh, <laughs> therefore, maybe just let us know that that one that participant say no. Maybe there's different ways they would like to participate. I mean, this is what clusters are for. So, um, I think it's good to say, non area that that. That no is because of any reasons, they can always get back to us to let us know. And just to point out another thing, uh, the changes uh, are not depend, do not depend on uh, only on the events organized by the project. You can register, for instance, you are a logistic company that, that want to visit another uh, logistic platform in another country. So you can register with your profile and uh, find out a matching with this uh, platform, uh, this logistic platform or whatever, and you can uh, organize the matching, uh, business to business matching. It shouldn't be uh, a matching organized by, by the project. It should be a business to business uh, matching. So 
If you are interested, you can register here, register as soon as possible. I will recommend you to register as soon as possible in order to have the possibility of uh, seeing all the uh, opportunities for, for, for matching. Because once you register, you can uh, see uh, all the participants in the, in, the, in the platform, not only in the, in the pilot scheme, not only for the smart city clusters, but also from the rest of the project um, participating in this, in this uh, scheme. Uh, so as soon as you can do it, you will have more chances to, to, to find a suitable partner, partner for you uh, to produce this, this exchange and this learning activity. Oh. Yes, we will share uh, the, the, the link of this uh, webinar and, and the presentations with all of you, so you will have all the, all the information and also uh, the, the links uh, to the different, to the platform, to the registration, um, to the registration uh, link for the platform and all the guides that you need to, to have uh, for doing this process. Nerea, there is a last question asking whether if, if I'm not a cluster, can I participate in an exchange? Then yes, as we said, um, as we said here, I'm sharing my screen again, there is a, there is a, a, a different, can you see my screen? Yes. All right. Okay, yes, uh, the participants can be uh, representatives of cluster organizations, also SMEs, that as was pointed before, members of participating countries in COSME or the EU, and also a scaling up support organizations, which is a, a, you know, a, a very list of, of types of organizations, tech centers, research institutes, uh, innovation hubs, fab labs, creative hubs, so yes. The only thing obviously you have to, uh, you know, be registered in the platform and, and you know, and, and this is the type of uh, participants that can, that can uh, participate in exchange. And uh, finally, uh, maybe we can open the, the microphones of everybody in order if you want. All right. Something. Sorry, the, the question was addressed again in the chat. Uh, a, a SME uh, that is that not belongs to a cluster can participate? And the answer is no, the, the SMEs have to belong to a cluster in order to, to participate. Uh, as SME, we can participate with more than one person to the event seminars. Uh, yes, you can participate with more than one, uh, more than one person in the, in the event. So maybe we can open the microphones. Uh, Marco, if you can do it. Yes, they do it. Okay. So you, you, you want to speak or you want to ask something? Uh, please do not hesitate to unmute your microphone and, and ask your questions. I just wanted to say also something more about the participation. Um, they can, part like uh, as I told you, SMEs can participate. As uh, Christian told, clusters can participate. It depends also on each exchange. So they could be they could be exchanges that are only for SMEs. They could be exchanges that are only for big com for uh, let's say big companies and uh, not big companies, but uh, clusters and um, uh, scale up organizations. And they can be uh, exchanges that can be open for everyone. So it depends, let's say, on the kind of exchange. As as I show you, uh, I show you the format of the exchanges that we as as partners are organizing. So as clusters are organizing, but as Nerea and Christian told you, there are different uh, other kinds of exchange that can be found in the platform. So in the platform, you can see the different exchanges that can be available and the kind of um, languages that it can involve and the kind of a, let's say formats that it can uh, it can include. Remind that this is an opportunity uh, for for all of you 
to get in contact with a, a international network of companies that uh, you can benefit from the change by sharing experience, knowledge, uh, and, 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 and visits. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is something that you can do in group or business to business. I, I think that is a good opportunity in order to establish this, uh, this uh, collaboration with a, a, a huge network, network of, of, uh, of companies in Europe. Okay, so if there is no any other question, uh, maybe we can close here. Uh, and if you want to have more information, you can use our info uh, uh, email uh, for the smart city clusters, or you can uh, contact directly with with us. Most of you have uh, the contact of one of it of us. Uh, so you can directly contact uh, with us or yes, contact... there, there is one more question about uh, Pablo Andres Capelin. Mm -hmm. If I am food service distributor, can I apply? Uh, if you are an SME and uh, you you can and you are a cluster member, you can apply. We need to if you fit into one of the three, uh, I suppose that you are not a cluster, of course. So if you are an SME and you belong to, a, to any of the, of the clusters in, in the Cosmo participating countries, you can apply. And also I would like to, to remind that uh, we have uh, the Smart City Clusters uh, website in which you can be updated of the events uh, that we are organizing. So no more questions. Okay, so we can close here. Thank you very much for, for, for attending and remind that we are at your disposal for, for, for any question or any doubt that you can have after this webinar. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.